This video is going to show you the process of how to account for or record purchase returns. This relates to Chapter 5 of our Year 12 accounting text. So what happens if we need to return items? Well, we're going to um, conduct a process called a purchase return. And this is where we return an inventory item to our supplier. Our suppliers are going to be um, our accounts payable. And we only do this for items that were bought on credit for the purpose of Year 12 accounting. So common reasons why you might need to do a purchase return. Well, you might get inventory that is faulty or it's damaged. Uh, the inventory could be the wrong size or color or model. You might have actually had too many items that were delivered to you um, or too many were purchased. So you need to return a couple. Or you could simply change your mind about what inventory you, you want or need. Now, when we make a purchase return, we need, we're going to create a source document called a credit note. So you might see a couple of different abbreviations for a credit note. You can see them in brackets on the screen there, but they're a special kind of source document that is only created for returns. So key features of credit notes. You'll see that a credit note looks really similar to an invoice. So you can see here that it must identify the following three things. So the first thing it must identify is the name of the business or person that is returning the inventory. So if we look at this credit note, we can see that information here, returned by Hardware Plus. It needs to also say what type of inventory was returned and the number or the quantity. And we can see that we returned two AED electric drills. And the last thing it needs to show is it needs to show the reason. So often it'll just have a little note down the bottom that'll say why. So in this case, we can see that Hardware Plus returned two AED electric drills because they were faulty. Now, just like other source documents, the name of the seller is always uh, on top of the document. So we know in this case that Macron or Marcon Tools, sorry, is the name of the seller. So they've sold this inventory to Hardware Plus. Now, this is the name of the business who's now accepting back the inventory as a return. So it's really important that when you're looking at these scenarios, you know which business you are. So for this instance, we're going to be Hardware Plus. So we are um, putting uh, some inventory or we're doing a purchase return of inventory to mark on tools. So how do we record this? Well, there's a couple of ways that we can look at this. If we think back to what happens when we purchase the inventory on credit, you can see that these three things happen. We know that inventory goes up, GST clearing, or the amount of GST that we owe the ATO goes down because we're paying that out. And the amount of money that we owe to an account payable goes up. So when we return inventory, you can see that the same three accounts are affected. But if you look at the different arrows and the movements, you can see that all we're doing is we're reversing what happened. So what that's going to look like, if I'm recording this document um, up on the right, we can see that on August 28, we returned inventory. So what that's going to mean is our inventory is going to go down. And when an asset goes down, it's a credit and it's going to go down by $360. The amount of GST that was paid out by the business is going to go down because we're actually getting that GST liability back. So I need to increase my GST clearing account. So it's a liability increasing. That's going to be a credit. And because I'm returning some inventory, the amount of money I owe to that account payable, so account payable and mark on tools, the amount that I owe them is now going down 
because I now don't owe them for those two faulty drills. So when a liability goes down, it's going to be debited. So those are my entries. Now my narration will say something like returned to AED 400 drills to supplier and I'll put the reason, faulty, and then I need to put my credit note 85. So you can see what I've done here with my narration is I've included how many, what type, and the reason. I've also included that source document that I have to put in every narration. So if you look at those three things I've included, I've included the things that came from that source document that we talked about before. So what does this look like in the general ledger? So we've got here the transaction we just recorded and we've got a sample or an extract of our general ledger accounts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to then transfer that over into my general ledger. So my inventory account, I can see on August 28 is going to be going down. So it's going to be credited $360. Now that 360, I can also find that in the account payable account. So I need to put account payable, mark on tools, and that's going to be that first transaction recorded. The second part of the transaction, the GST clearing account, I need to credit it $36 once again on August 28. And my cross-reference, I need to say where else am I going to see that? And that's going to be in the account payable for mark on tools. And then the last thing I need to do is I need to write what, um, what is happening to the account payable. So just, this is actually my account for mark on tools here. So I can see that on August 28, the account payable for Mark on Tools was debited $396. And that comes from two different places. It comes from inventory and GST clearing. So I need to put in a double cross-reference again to show where I'm going to find that total amount of $396. So what we're starting to see now is the total effect that can happen to accounts like account payable. So you can see on this side, on the credit side, I've obviously made a uh, purchase of inventory on credit. And then on this side, you can see that this is a return of some of that inventory. So these are the kinds of skills that you're going to need to be able to do some of the early exercises in Chapter 5.